Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today we're going to talk U.S. history, and we're going to compare Blossom and Roots, A River of Voices, Volume 1, with Woke Homeschooling's O oh Freedom. So first of all, um, we have been using Blossom and Root for a variety of, well, for our language arts and our science. And so I was very interested in their history um, when they had a U.S. history come out. So that's why we chose that one. And we wanted to make sure that we were teaching history from um, a very inclusive perspective, which is how I ran across O oh Freedom by Woke Homeschooling. Um, and so I'm going to compare and talk about both of those today. I have a fourth grader, so um, that is uh, the learner age that we are uh, talking about. And this is our first introduction to U.S. history. Um, we also have not done a world history or state history or anything like that yet before. So this is our first like history lesson. We've done social studies, but this is... Um, history. So uh, first I want to talk about Blossom and Root. Uh, they have a River of Voices volume one. I honestly haven't checked to see if volume two is available, but we will be looking into that um, because we have enjoyed uh, volume one. Volume one covers before Columbus um, up to the Bill of Rights. And we have just gotten in our history uh, timeline to um, the American Revolution. So we are almost kind of through what volume one covers. Um, we've been doing a combination of both of the US history curriculum, so we're not gonna run out. Um, I just need to look and see if volume two is available yet. Um, okay, so uh, A River of Voices, volume one, um, is split up into three groups, basically. Um, or, or split up into three different learner groups. One is the gentle pathway, which they talk about using for kindergarten through second graders, kind of just an introduction to some of the topics. Um, skip some of the topics, don't cover some of the really um, heavy or uh, uncomfortable topics at that age group. Um, then there's the standard pathway, which they say is geared for grades three through eighth. Um, it uh, basically is going to cover, you know, it's not going to leave out details, but it's not going to go in depth to um, some of those topics. And then they have their advanced pathway, which they say could be for grades seven and up. Um, and that would be extra um, deep dives, additional resources, um, maybe some slightly different books uh, that cover topics in a slightly different way. Um, we're doing the standard pathway. I haven't looked really at either of them, but each lesson is divided out where it says, okay, for the gentle pathway, here's what you're going to do for the standard pathway and for the advanced pathway. So you kind of see what's covered in each and they build on each other. So if you were to use this over and over again, you could do the gentle pathway when they're younger, you could go through it again and it would add more information when you do the standard pathway. And then if you were to repeat it again, like in high school, um, you could use the advanced version and just get more in depth each time. So I think that's really good. And, and maybe we will go through it again. Um, each lesson or each topic is uh, designed to be covered in a day, I think, uh, roughly. I mean, I, I guess if you did everything, um, it wouldn't be some of the reading, some of the books are a little bit longer. So maybe you do the reading, but then you do the, the talking about it um, in a day. If that makes sense, you could spread it out. Obviously you could do these at whatever kind of pace works for you. Um, but um, we generally would uh, pick a topic and, and cover it um, across one or two days if there was a little bit of extra reading or something. 
Um, let's see, I'm looking at my notes here. <laughs> um, within each lesson, they then divide it into components, right? And this is very similar to their science, if you've ever looked at their science. So there's the minimal, what's the bare minimum you need to cover as far as this topic goes, and it gives you sort of the, the fact-based books um, that you would want to read to get the lessons. Um, then it has the for the book basket folks so these would be more of the like storytelling types of books the historical fictions or um, things that uh, give someone's perspective um, during that time or relating to that time. Then they have for the visual learners, so they have usually YouTube videos um, or right now for the American Revolution we got. Liberty Kids, which is a DVD set, um, and we're watching those. So, um, but it's usually YouTube videos that you can um, look at and watch. Um, and then they have some suggested activities. Um, often they relate back to something that you read. So if you read about um, the Native American doing this type of thing, then maybe that's the type of activity that you would do. Um, and then they have their, their student notebook. And the student notebook consists of um, one page that has like where you can, um, it, it's got a written prompt and it's got a place to draw a picture, right? So the prompt might be, you know, something about what you read. It might be like when we did the, um, around Thanksgiving um, and the, the harvest, uh, uh, festivals and stuff it's asked like what are 10 things that you're thankful for right so then you draw the pictures and you write it but there's a there's a written prompt um and that's for each lesson so it's good that it gives some sort of like a product that you can take a picture of and um <laughs> if that's how you document it that's how we document ours we take a picture of it so we can send it in at the end of the semester um but uh but there's a product so you can show that um the learners demonstrated uh can demonstrate some of that knowledge um so that is the river voices um i like it i think that it is um i think it's gone a lot in depth with the native american um communities and tribes and um put a lot of emphasis on that which I think is really good um it's going into a lot of detail around the um lead up to the American Revolution and um, the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. So it's spending a lot of time on that, which I think, again, is good because that's the US history. That's the start of our official, <laughs> now we are the United States. So I think it's good. I also really like that there's a notebook where we are recording things and it's got that journal prompt and it's it's nice um, to have that product measure as we go through. Um, I think that in comparison to O oh Freedom, which we're about to talk about, it's a bit on the lighter side as far as um, the negative uh, aspects of our history. It definitely touches upon um, things like uh, um, the Europeans coming over and pushing the Native Americans out and um, how that affected the Native Americans. So it's definitely presenting things differently than I was taught growing up, um, which I think is really good. And, and I'm learning a new perspective from it. Um, but I think it's lighter than what is being covered um, by woke homeschooling in O Freedom. So let's talk about O Freedom. Um, so O Freedom is, uh, this is a version two that we have 2.0 or, or something. I can't remember how it's worded, um, but it's the updated version. Um, it came out in 2019 um, and it covers uh, before Columbus all the way up to contemporary issues is what it says. It does cover the, uh, uh, it does cover 9-11. So I know for sure it does that. And then it has another section after that that says contemporary issues. Um, I, uh, it is a lot and it is designed to probably span over two years not necessarily all in one they have sort of a guide they're like if you do it in 
one year, here's sort of the pace. If you spread it across two years, here's the pace. Um, so they have a little bit of that guide. Um, we're definitely not going to finish it all in a year. Um, the way that it is outlined, uh, well, so first of all, it says that it's for grades three and up. Um, and then it talks a lot about like, um, you know, going in depth with what, uh, with what you want to go in depth with and um, taking your time to cover these and that it's not an independent study, that this is to be done together, to be able to have discussion around these topics so that um, your learners can really understand them um, in more detail. Um, each lesson, each week, so it's done with weeks. Um, and it's like I said, it's got a week plan, has four lessons in it. So if you go by sort of the fast paced version, you would be doing um, history uh, four days a week. Um, each section, it has about 30 minutes, which is your like factual information reading, 30 minutes that is the storytelling reading. So you're kind of following um, one book, a uh, storytelling book across maybe a couple of weeks sometimes um, as you're reading the facts and they work through it. Um, then it has a section about how you can experience this a little bit more. So it gives suggestions about maybe some activities um, or it's got links to YouTube videos. Um, it's There's also some songs. I think they have a playlist. I haven't looked it up yet, but it, there's a playlist that's on Spotify maybe, um, but there's a playlist that you can get and hear the songs from it. So, um, you know, spending more time to go in depth and kind of experience some of that stuff. Um, and then it has a section that is about discussion and reflection and that it has some questions to kind of think about, um, but it really is designed to make sure that there is time to talk about the concepts, um, talk about the perspectives, and then reflect upon those. And the reflection, there's a, a journal, which you can purchase separately, or you can just use your own journal. Um, and they're supposed to, you know, write about what they thought about um, the things that they learned that week or that topic, right? Um, we have not done the journal because we've been using um, from Blossom and Root, the student notebook to document our stuff. But since we're about wrapped up with there, um, I think we're going to start doing some journaling um, along the lines. So with O oh Freedom, um, it goes really in detail. If you cover everything, um, which you can choose not to, right? It says you can pick what to read and what not to read. But if you cover everything, it's a lot. Honestly, um, their estimate of about 30 minutes of fact-based reading and 30 minutes of storytelling, we're not going through it that fast. I feel like it's more like 45 minutes each, um, maybe a little longer sometimes. Um, maybe we just read slow, but it's meant to be read aloud. So, you know, you can only go so fast if you're reading aloud. Um, so I think that the pacing, obviously we're going through it a lot slower than by the week. I think officially we're on week 10. Um, but one of the things that we're doing is we are using both of those curriculums and we're going chronologically. So we might do a little bit more in O oh Freedom, um, because we, um, because there's more to cover there. And then we might do a few in a row of River of Voices because they went into more detail on this topic. And then we kind of alternate for a little while. And then, you know, so chronologically, we're pulling both at the same time in order to kind of cover it from different perspectives. Um, as far as the books that are required for both, oh, I forgot to say, they're both digital downloads. Um, so you order them and then you you download it. Um, as far as the books, you do have to find the books by yourself, but I do know that Oh Freedom Woke Homeschooling had a link to a bookseller, um, not Amazon, but a bookseller who actually had their stuff already packaged and that's the way we went and did it. So I didn't have to find each little book. 
they already had. If you just want the chapter books here, if you just want the, um, the fact-based reading or if you want everything, right? And I was able to pull it that way. Um, Blossom and Root, River of Voices, volume one, um, they have their book list and there is some overlap um but there are a lot that are different so um you know so we've um we have a lot of history books now basically um but that's okay right and um as far as pacing like i said um we are going at a slower pace than um woke home schooling oh freedom is recommending but probably a little bit of a faster pace than Blossom and Roots River of Voices um, because we're nearly through um, what they gave us for the year. Um, and we're only um, <laughs> a few weeks in for what um, uh, Oh Freedom says to cover. But Oh Freedom is supposed to cover basically two years and there will be another volume um, of uh river of voices so we'll look at that so anyway that is a comparison between blossom and roots river of voices volume one and woke homeschooling's oh freedom i like them both i think that if you were looking for um stuff for more in depth that they or older learners they both could cover that concept woke homeschooling's oh freedom is definitely a lot more reading um than river of voices uh from blossom and root and i think that's probably the biggest difference um sometimes the topics and the depth that they go into on different topics varies um but i don't think either one is neglectful of any topics so let me know if you've tried either of these. Let me know what you think. And if there's any other information you would add, please comment below. Thank you.